Hello and welcome to the SAP Business One Beacons Demo Technical Introduction. My name is Trinidad Martinez and I'm part of the SAP Business One Solution Architects. In this session, I would like to introduce the technical details of the SAP Business One Beacons Demo we have demoed at different SAP Business One events. We will start this session with an introduction to the Beacons Demo scenario. We will have a look to the architecture of the full implementation and after the general view, we will go into each one of the different components in more detail. Let's now start with the definition of this scenario. In our retail shop, several scenarios are implemented. As soon as a customer enters the shop, he receives a set of offers based on his SAP Business One customer orders history. If a user spends a certain amount of time in a specific location, offers will be sent to the user based not only on the SAP Business One orders history, but also on the actual location of the customer. Customers can add to their shopping cart any of the products offered and do the final checkout directly from their mobile. On checkout, a sales order is automatically created in SAP Business One via service layer. The shop manager monitors customers' location inside the shop from a heat map. Let's have a look to the architecture. The solution has been implemented on SAP Cloud Platform following the loosely coupled approach. We keep a B1 vanilla installation. We use IoT devices called iBeacons that broadcast Bluetooth messages. The iBeacon messages are received by the mobile phones of the shop customers and sent to SAP Cloud Platform IoT services for storage. Our application running on SAP Cloud Platform is harmonizing the communication between the different SAP Cloud Platform services, SAP Business One services, and all other components around. SAP Business One is running on the SAP Business One Cloud Deployment Services and offers service layer and predictive analysis services. From the SAP Cloud Platform, we leverage the following features. IoT services to manage all the beacons data, push notification features from the SAP Cloud Platform mobile services for sending notifications to the customers, like for example, welcome offers, SAP HANA to store all required solution data, including IoT messages, and SAP HANA access to run our JavaScript application. A heat map application has been developed to show customers' location in real time. Let's now have a look to each component in detail now. We will start with the iBeacons, continue with the iOS mobile application, then move to the SAP Cloud Platform services and end up with the SAP Business One hosted by SAP Details. Let's understand how iBeacons work. iBeacons is the Apple's implementation of Bluetooth low energy wireless technology iBeacons broadcast or receive tiny and static pieces of data within short distances. Usually, iBeacons send the data to other local devices, for example, mobile phones in our case. Then, the mobile device will send the data using Wi-Fi or mobile data to the management application. For our demo, we are using uBeacons from Ubudu company. You can get more details about the devices on the website indicated here. Beacons are used in many different scenarios. Here we can see some samples. First sample is customer detection to get recommendations and maybe personalize help. Second case is indoor wayfinding. This scenario is used in the Louvre Museum in Paris to guide visitors through the museum. We have another usage deployed in Antibes where tourists receive notifications when they are close to monuments, providing them details about the monument. Many other scenarios are available on different iBeacons providers. Just check on the internet for more details. The iBeacons we are using for this demo provide access to a configuration manager application that helps configuring and defining rules for the beacon devices. Depending on the provider, you will get different tools and applications to configure them. The first step for our beacons is to register them into our account and define their main hardware configuration. For our demo, we have configured four iBeacons, one for the chocolate shelf, one for the entrance of the shop, one for the wine shelf, and the last one for the cheese shelf. For each one of them, we will define the major and minor signal IDs, as well as some other properties. Once our hardware properties are defined, we will set up some rules for our beacons. 
for example, when the triggers will be sent, or entry or on exit, how close we need to be to trigger the signals a start and end, which message will be sent when the rules are fulfilled, and so on. With these steps, we get our beacons configured. Second step is to create a mobile application that will make use of the provide APIs to get notifications from the beacons and be able to manage them. We'll see that part in the next section. Let's now then have a look to the implementation details of the iOS mobile application. Before starting, let's have a look to some screen captures from the mobile application so you have an idea of what the application is doing. We can see there are two types of notifications received by the customer. The first one when the customer enters the shop and the second one when the customer stands by one aisle of the shop for some time. When the customer clicks on the notification, a list of offers is provided. The customer can select any of the items and add them to his basket. Once ready to go, the customer opens his basket and does a checkout without requiring to go over the cashier. The order is transferred to our backend application that will connect to SAP Pieces 1 service layer to create the order. A confirmation is sent back to the customer with the number of the document in SAP Business 1. To implement the iOS mobile application, we are using Objective-C language. The development is based on the Ubudu iOS SDK framework delivered by our beacons provider. This framework helps us handling the communication between the mobile application and the beacons. The first task of the mobile application is to receive notifications from the beacons and send the details provided by the beacons to the SAP Cloud Platform IoT services. In the code presented here, the notification is received by the mobile application and is calling send beacons info method to send the details to the SAP Cloud Platform IoT service. In this slide, we can see how the beacons details are sent to the SAP Cloud Platform IoT services. Before sending, the information is formatted and includes the device ID of the mobile phone, the beacon ID, the user ID of the person registered in our shop and therefore Business One, and the timestamp at the time the notification was received by the mobile phone. The second task of the mobile application is to receive notifications from the SAP Cloud Platform backend application via SAP Cloud Platform push notification mobile services based on the location of the user, entrance to the shop or navigation in the shop. The mobile application will present the notifications to the user. If the user clicks on the notification, the offer details will be extracted from the notification and presented to the end user in the form of a list of offers. After the user adds some items to his basket, he is ready to check out. Confirming the checkout will then call a service in the SAP Cloud Platform backend application that will call service layer and add a sales order. The mobile application waits for the sales order creation confirmation callback from the backend and shows the document number of the sales order to the mobile user. Let's now have a look to the SAP Cloud Platform IoT services. SAP Cloud Platform provides several services, one of them being the IoT service. A cockpit presents the management and monitoring of the different messages and devices part of the IoT solution. In order to configure an IoT service, we define a beacon message type containing the fields timestamp, device ID, beacon ID, and user ID. The format of this message will define how the IoT service will automatically store the data. The second step is to define a device type. We will associate the message type we defined previously to our beacon device type. Once our message and device types defined, we can go to the IoT Message Management Service cockpit tools to check our received messages and send IoT messages to test our configuration. IoT Services also provides REST APIs, allowing us to enter data into the IoT platform via our mobile application, as we saw in the previous section of the mobile application. In this screen, we can see the main table storing our IoT messages. This table is automatically created by IoT Services based on our message and device configuration. We can see the properties we define for our message type, 
like timestamp, device ID, beacon ID, and user ID. The first two columns are automatically added and managed by the IoT services. For each message received, a new record will be added into that table. The IoT data will be afterwards used by our backend application to show customers' behavior in the heat map, as well as send notifications to the customers based on the location. Let's now have a look to the backend server side application running on SCP. Our application is running in SCP as a HANA XS Classic application. This application proxies SAP Business One XAP framework and SAP Business One service layer running on SAP Business One hosted by SAP. Leverages SAP Business One predictive algorithms, welcome offer, and item recommendation to produce the welcome offers based on SAP Business One buying history of the customer. And item recommendations based not only on predictive algorithms, but also on customer's behavior. Offers a set of services consumed by the mobile application, registered device, create order, and so on, and also consumed by the heat map, like get user positions and some others. This application also hosts the heat map UI. Let's now have a look to the SAP Cloud Platform mobile services. We use the SAP Cloud Platform mobile services to configure push notifications. Push notifications send welcome offers and item recommendations calculated by the backend application based on customer's SAP Business One history as well as customer location. In this screen, we can see the pages where we define and configure our mobile services. Now let's introduce how SAP Business One is hosted by SAP. SAP Business One Cloud Deployment Services is the SAP Business One private cloud infrastructure as a service on HANA, run by SAP, offered as a service to partners. You can get more details in the link provided at the end of the presentation. We use a vanilla SAP Business One installation as all our development is done in SAP Cloud Platform. Just the heat map is installed as an add-on hosting the heat map web page. Let's now have a look to the heat map application. The heat map is shown into SAP Business One as a web page opening inside a custom form. The heat map application allows the store manager to visualize the floor plan of the store, monitor the store in real time with a heat map of customers in the store. This heat map can be opened within SAP Business One application or any browser on desktop or mobile. The store manager can then decide, based on the heat map, how to design the shop floor map. The technology used to implement the floor plan visualization is based on scalable vector graphics. You can get all details in the Wikipedia link provided on the slide. The customer heat map visualization is based on the heat map implementation from Patrick Witt. You can get all details on his web page also provided here. Here you can find some extra links. The first one is a blog in the SAP community covering the Beacons demo and showing some more details. The second link goes to the SAP Business One hosted by SAP service. Third one is the SAP Cloud Platform. Fourth one is the iBeacons provider we have used for our demo. And the last one points to the heat map module we have used for our heat map. I would like to thank you in the name of the SAP Business One Solution Architects team. We develop this demo application together.